Okay. Let's get on with Ventura. I'll start off with a few slides, not many, and work away from there. Can you see the slides, Mike? Yes, absolutely. Thank right. you. Pretty obvious first one. Um, and that's the wrong Ventura. Some of you know that one. Some of you may know another Ventura. It used to be something called Ventura Publisher. Um, back in the late 70s, early 80s. That's the one we want. Now, I'm going to give you a list quickly of what's there. I'll give you a few seconds to just go through it. I am not going to be covering everything in depth. There is way too much. So the way I'm going to structure this tonight, I'm going to go into the bits and pieces that I tend to use generally, and which looking at what I'm doing, I suspect most other people are using those as well. There's a load of obscure stuff in here, which some people might find useful, but I suspect the majority will never go near. And of course, some of it, just being a beta, doesn't exist yet. It's not out there yet. And you'll see from the next few slides, there is more than one or two new features into various bits and pieces, as you can see. Um, and this list does end eventually. As you, that's the last set of features. Um, as this being recorded, you can pick these up anytime you like. Now, main th main thing, something I've been getting from people about it is what will it run on? Okay, these are the minimum requirements of Mac to run Ventura. It's 2017 iMac or later, an iMac Pro, 2018 MacBook Air or later, 2017 MacBook Pro or later, 2018 Mac Mini, 2017 MacBook. And here's the one that seems to be confusing people, a 2019 Mac Pro. Now I've had people who have bought themselves a Mac Pro in 2019. And they've come to me and said, well, I, it says I can't run Ventura on it, it won't have it. I can't put the beta or anything else on it. What's happened is they have bought the, two, the late 2013 Mac Pro, which is the little black cylinder. Now the, the model designation, as I just mentioned, is late 2013. The 2019 Mac Pro they're talking about is the large silver tower, okay? That is the 2019 Mac Pro. Just because you bought your cylinder in 2019 doesn't mean it will work. The problem is Apple are going on the architecture, that is the actual hardware that's inside it, and that is completely different on the 2013 cylinder Mac Pro to the new 2019. So if you've got the cylinder and you bought it 2019, it is not gonna work. There is no way that's ever gonna function with Ventura. I've just covered all that. And that is the sum of the slides. You'll be pleased to hear, we can dispense with those. Okay, I'm gonna start with, this is running, this whole presentation, all of this has been done on the beta versions of Ventura. This is running on a 2020 Mac mini with an M1 chip. I've also got it running on a 2007 Mac MacBook Pro which is the Intel chip, and it works absolutely fine on both of them. In fact, I'm very pleased with Apple's betas over the last few years. They are quite reasonably polished right from the word go. I've not had any personal problems with the machine. I think others have, but nothing hugely untoward. One of the first changes that came across is when I went to system preferences. And if you look down there, you'll see it's no longer system preferences. They've now called it system settings. This is bringing the Mac OS closer and closer to iOS. iOS has settings, now the Mac has settings. The layout of settings has changed as well, which is much more familiar to those who use iOS. Similar layout, you've got 
a sidebar. You don't get the sidebar on the iPhone, but you do get this bit here on the iPhone. That's what you see. And then when you tap on something, on the Mac, you can see it goes to, it just adds it to the right. When you're on iOS, it changes the screen. It has to, there's not enough space on iOS to do, not on an iPhone to do that as well. Not unless you've got large magnifying glasses. Most of the normal stuff is still there. There are a few additions. Um, one of those I'm going to go straight into. I'm going to go into general and you'll see the layouts change somewhat. We used to go into system preferences and straight into time machine. It would usually be at the bottom of your screen. Now time machines moved into general. So you may find, and you almost certainly will find as I did, that things have shifted. Um, I guess we'll get used to it. It does kind of hark to the Windows side of things where let's do the change to the control panel and all of a sudden we look at it and go, where's this? Where's that? What have they done with that? They've hidden it, but uh, it's not hidden. It's all still there. It's just in different places. I'm going to touch on Time Machine because there is a particular change in there, which I think some people will like because they've asked for it before and you've had to fudge it to make it work. So if you go into Gen into Options, you now have a choice to change the backup frequency. You're no longer stuck with an automatic backup of every hour. I've got mine set to manually because I didn't want it to wipe over my original backup after immediately putting on a beta. I wanted to keep that secure. So now I control when it backs up. But if you click on the arrows there, you've got three extra options. You can allow it to back up every hour as it did, you can allow it to back up once a day or even once a week. So you're no longer forced into an hourly backup. Most of the time, for most people, that will just depend on your circumstances and what you need. I would still recommend that if it's business critical, you allow it to do the hourly backup. Um, obviously, if it's not business critical, it's your choice. You have to think about how much data you'd prepare, be prepared to lose if you didn't have the backups running frequently. Going to go through, I'm going to digress slightly on backups because I've been having a number of people with modern Macs with an SSD built in who have decided that because it's a solid state disk and it's electronic, I no longer need to back up. Nothing could be further from the truth. You actually, in some circumstances, have a bigger problem if you lose your data from a modern Mac than you did with an early one. With an earlier Mac with a physical mechanical hard drive inside it, if it went wrong, you could pull out the drive. Um, 85, 90% of the time, somebody like myself could retrieve the data on a separate machine. Worst comes to worst, you have to send it off to data recovery specialists. And the price from that varies from about 200 to the sky's the limit, depending on what the issue is, how much data is missing and how bad the whole thing is. The problem with the modern Max with this sort of recovery is that your solid state disk isn't something you can plug in anymore. It is soldered on to the main logic board. So if that SSD fails, it's part of that logic board. I can't pull it off and have a look at it. Most people can't pull it off and have a look at it. It has to go to data specialists if they can do it. They may or may not be able to do it at the moment, but if they can, it is going to be horrendously expensive. So my advice is if you're not backing up, please, please do it. Don't assume because it's all electronic, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna fail. It can, it does, it will. Okay, I'll stop moaning now. you've got yeah so basically your system preferences are now system settings um they've pushed that out a bit further as well because if we go into something like touch into mail for a moment and if you click on mail you've now got settings whereas you used to have preferences so apple have done this across the board 
this doesn't automatically happen on third party apps. If you run a third party application up, it still, at least at the moment, have preferences. I'm kind of assuming, and this is a naughty thing to do, that these third parties will be expected to change to preference to change preferences to settings in their own time. Uh, can't see it being something Apple would try and force because it is part of your the application build. Any questions on system preferences? I'm not going to go through each and every one. I, I've seen people do each and every preference as they come up new, but it should be fairly self-explanatory. It's just a different layout, much more in keeping with iOS. All right, probably the biggest change that most of us saw at the WWDC was something called Stage Manager. And you can switch it on from the control center up in that corner. You can always also set it so it's part of the menu bar, but initially it's not in the menu bar. Initially, it will be in your control center. So we click on that and we enable Stage Manager. And straight away, I'm, hope, I'm hoping you could all see that. Straight away, I've lost my desktop icons. OK. And screen's gone blank. I've still got the dock down the bottom there, should you wish it. If you run up an application. Well, that's interesting. There's a bug because that wasn't there before. I'm going to come out of two applications and see if I can get this to behave because it has been behaving and they always know when you've got an audience oh you're damn right they do so we do that now let's run an application up see what it does let's bring mail up tap on mail and it switches now it's starting to work there's obviously a bug there between starting things without stage manager on which is what i had done earlier i'd switched it off doing some other work because i didn't want it and I'd started the applications that you've just seen go pear shaped from within the dock as you would have done previously. And then we've ended up with icons that aren't doing what they're supposed to do in Stage Manager. So definitely a bug, something that needs sorting. So we'll pull up a few applications, bring up pages, a new document. Yeah, you'll probably notice it, it can be a little bit jumpy. I'm, it's the sort of thing we're hoping they'll sort it out. Page manager. And there's a nice clean desktop. There's some applications. Bring up Safari, tap on that. It comes nice and easy. Now, if you want to, as I do, when you're doing some research, you want to see two apps at once, you still can. What you do is I want to see Safari, for example, and I want to run pages with it. What you do is you click and hold on that one, then you move it, drag it in front of the other application, let go of the mouse. Now I've got both of them up at once, so I can move it about. It'll stay there. I can move that across and it stays there bring it to the front, or you can send it back. So you're not limited to one application. You can have both. Can... Which is useful for research, um, although two screens is actually easier than that, but that's a personal choice. Now, I moaned earlier that I've lost my desktop icons you can get them back you can have the desktop icons with stage manager and the way to do that is to go into system settings not preferences go into system settings go into desktop and dock when i can see it there we go desktop desk no, desktop and in here, 
I get to it is Stage Manager, which you can see is switched on. If you click on Customize, you now have the option to switch your desktop icons back on. A small thing, but quite useful. So now I can use Stage Manager. As you can see, my desktop icons, should I need any of them, particularly if I want to drag something from a desktop icon onto the document or into any other application, it's all there and ready to go. Are there any questions on Stage Manager? Not that there's much to, to do other than this, that, that's it. Okay, then we'll cover two new applications, which, well, I say new, they're new applications to the Mac. They are not new to iOS. Get rid of those, that. Oh, wait, go away. So if I bring up the finder window, do an applications, we've got two new ones, which again is bringing it closer to iOS. And we've got a clock. with the alarms, stopwatch, and a timer, which should look familiar to you if you've ever used these on iOS. World clock, you can add different places. I couldn't find Naples. The closest I could get to, would you believe, was Miami. I was trying to put Naples into it earlier, but it wouldn't have it. Well, no, it wouldn't have Naples in Florida, only in Italy. Which I thought was a bit short sighted of them. The other one that's come across from iOS is weather. Current location would be useful. As you can see, it's a uh, it's a balmy 18 outside. It's about 19 inside at the moment. I'm not going to go into any details because it is the weather app. You can do the same things you did in iOS. Um, I believe there are a few bits more you can do in this. Plus, you've got a much bigger screen if you want to see a bit more. Come out of that. You can see with the stage man, if you close one application, it then brings the next one along. It doesn't leave, doesn't tend to leave you with a blank screen in the middle. We'll move rapidly onto mail. A couple of useful things on this, especially if you've done something that maybe you shouldn't do. And the first one is the ability to undo a send. You need to think about it carefully though, if you're going to use this. If you decide to send an email, we'll write a new email and we'll, oh, I'll have to turn stage manager off, otherwise it's going to cause problems. The problem with Stage Manager when I'm doing something like this, if I want to show people, is that it's going to switch windows across when I actually want them to stay up. What I need is here's my composing window and there's mail in the background. With Stage Manager, as you saw, it throws the main mail across the side there, which is no use for something like this. So send an email. I'll send it off to my iCloud account and we'll do a yet another test send use that so sent an email or trying to now if you look down there there's an option to undo send okay you can click on that and it will get that email back, that email will never go. But I've missed the window of opportunity now, that email has gone. So we'll do it again, and this time I'll make sure it doesn't actually go. Send it to me again. I think I'm lucky. Same again. Now this time, send it, look down there, 
undo send. You've got 10 seconds to do that. That email has not now not been sent. That's 10 seconds from the moment you hit the send email before it actually goes. So all it is in essence, you're not actually getting, you're not getting an email coming back. You're not pulling it back. What the only thing you're doing, you've got, you've got a pause there. You've just got a 10 second pause. That's 10 seconds to think, did I really want to send that? Oh my gosh, no, I shouldn't be saying that. So that's a nice touch. I think it's a very nice touch. I'm sure most of us have uh, done something like that before, gone, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have sent that, and it's too late normally. Well, you've got 10 seconds to think about it. Mitch has a question about emails. Mitch, would you like to unmute yeah. and fire away? Yes, hello, excellent presentation. Um, I think I know the answer to this. You know, they give you such a short amount of time to pull back that email, yet on text messages, they're giving you like 15 minutes. Is that because the email immediately goes to a server and the text message is confined in iMessage system? Yeah, yeah, your, your emails, they, they can't put much of a finer control on it because your emails are going to third party servers all over the world. So they have no control over the server in the middle. Whereas with iMessage, it's their own server, so they can do what they like with that. Yeah, that's that's sort of what I thought. You gotta yeah. you gotta act quickly if you want to get those emails have, back. Everybody, yeah. all the blogs are saying, "Oh man, that's not enough time." <laughs> well, the, the the problem problem is, and I could see Apple's pro problem point with this is ten seconds. It's actually a reasonable period of time. If you extend that thirty seconds, a minute, then you need a mechanism to say, "Look, don't." Give me the undo send just just send it and send it now you, you end up with delayed sends that you don't want yeah gotcha okay yeah. thank you very much that's okay you're welcome uh ian scott park has just made a lovely comment in the chat <laughs> just saying nobody can sober up in 10 seconds <clears throat> Ian, can I just say, um, when you do something really, really stupid, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I've done it myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there are some sobering moments when you're sending emails off in uh, as Mr. Angry. Very easily done. Right, if we go back to composing, I've got lots of emails coming from me at the moment. Now you can go with me a moment. You can schedule when you send an email. So I can decide mm -hmm. and let's do some. Fun. Yeah, there we go. And if anybody can understand that, well done. Next thing along the lines is you can schedule when you send an email. You may decide, and some people do, especially if you're sending to groups, that you don't want the email to go out immediately. So compose your email. Then up besides the email send button, there's an arrow. If you click on that, you can decide when you want to send it. You can click the send now and off it will go. You can send it as it say, says at nine o'clock tonight, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, or any time of day you want. So you can send an email off whenever you want it to be sent. You set up the schedule like this and just let it go. Um, I cancel that for a moment, get rid of this. So I will send that one nine o'clock tonight. That was my test send. Nothing more to be said on that one. It's just a case of waiting. So at nine o'clock tonight, with a bit of luck, we'll uh, see that email come back. 
Yeah, sorry, Mark, just one question on that. Yeah. Is, is the sort of draft email that you've just composed, is that sitting on your local machine or is it on the, the server, the email server, do you know? Because in other because I usually leave turn my machine off when I'm not using it. Um, I can't answer that. I actually don't know. Um, I haven't found out yet quite how they're doing it. Um, the one thing that has concerned me, as you've probably heard, when, when I hit the button to send the email and told it to send at nine o'clock, you heard it go or what sounded like it go. What I can't tell from any of the stuff we've got here is whether it's been held here or, or whether it's actually gone. See, I'm on iCloud, I had a test send, but that's not the test send that I sent. That's a different email. So yeah. I my suspicion is that the system, the local system is holding it because if you send it to one of your normal mail servers to a Google Mail or something like that, or as I'm with um, IONOS, their systems aren't geared up for delayed email. Apple is the only way I can see they make it work at the oh, as you, yeah okay I've just answered my own question by looking at the sidebar and you see something there called send later with one in it if I tap on that that's the email that's going to be sent so although it's made the sound that it's gone it's actually as I suspected as we all suspected it's sitting on this machine so if you switch this machine off now before nine o'clock, that email will never go. That That is going to be the one caveat if you want to do this. The machine you've done this on has got to be switched on around the time that you wanted the email to go. So it's no good trying to send an email. If you know you're going off on holiday, you send a, set up a schedule to send an email in the middle of you going on holiday, shut the machine down. If it's not switched on again in the middle of your holiday, it's not going to go. It's relying on the local machine, which I think is great when it comes to same day, hours later, or anything like that. But if it's going to be a week later, you've got to remember that machine needs to be switched on. Mark, Thanks, Mark. Uh, would, would mail have to be open as well uh, to be able to send that later? So your machine is on, but would mail still... It's a good question. Um, and it's one I don't know. Um, but we'll find out later on. I'll shut mail down at some point and we'll see yeah. if it goes. Okay. Um, it may be if if Apple, if once you've done that, Apple leave a process running in the background that can send mm -hmm. via mail, or it wouldn't be via mail, but via this a mail process, then yes. Depends what they've thought about. Okay. Um, okay, we'll go back into Mark. Yes. Sue has asked uh, a question in chat, just, and I'm sure the answer to this is yes, but she says, I assume you can edit it until it's scheduled to go. What's but I'm sure it, double click. You can, there's an edit up there. Oh, there's an edit button. Yes. Uh, that's just to edit the schedule. Ah. So no, you can't. Once it's gone, if you look at this, I, there's no way you can't click it. Well, you can click on it, but it just delete if you delete that it deletes the whole message right right so that's not going to be sent later now but you can't yeah you can't edit it you can send it or you can forget it but you can't edit thank you um one other thing they've added in mail as well is a remind me so if we go into message there's a remind me there now I've got an email there you can see from Sony. I can tell it to remind me later. To, this is to remind me to respond to that email. It's now five past. If I set that, oops, wrong one. Hours should be minutes. Schedule that. What that should do is to remind me that I need to respond to this email. Um, the other way you should be able to do it is a two 
two fingered swipe on the trackpad. You see that one there? If I swipe it across, you can hit a remind me button there instead of going up to message remind me. Personal preference. Some people have got trackpads and like to do that. Some people don't like to do that. Your choice, completely your choice. That's the basics, basic changes in mail. That's the main changes in mail. They have improved the search as well, which is very good to know. I'm not going to go into that because it's just searching around for things. Um, but that's all linked in with Spotlight, which has some improved search capabilities as well. So I will pop that to one side, see what that does. I'm now going to pop into messages. And I'm going to send, again, I'm sending these to myself. If I'd had more time to prepare, I'd have organized somebody else at the other end. First thing we're going to go into is deleting messages. If I tap on, I send myself one again. Sent from me to me. Double tap on that, and you can delete it. Of course, I'm sure. And if you go up to view, that's a little bug as well. You are supposed to be able to delete a message and then recover it, as was mentioned earlier, for up to 30 days. I had that working yesterday morning without, no, it wasn't yesterday morning, yesterday evening without a problem. You double tapped on it, you could delete the message, and then later on it would, uh, you could go and get it back. The, the idea is if you, if you start deleting messages, you've got 30 days to recover those messages back, and you would do it had that actually worked as it should have done, by view, recently deleted, and then you can select the message and bring it back again and put it back into messages. Um, it did work last night and it's not working tonight. Now there's a surprise. Okay, we'll try something a bit different. There's a undo send, which is um, very similar to the mail one, except it lasts longer. So we'll send that one off to myself. And if you double tap on that or right click on it, depending on what system you're running, I can do an undo send. What it should do is to undo the send on this side as well. And I think it won't work because I'm doing it to myself. It will work if you send it to somebody else. There is a but here. For that to work, you either have, to, both parties have to be running either Ventura, or if you're on iOS or iPadOS, it has to be version 16 or higher. Anything earlier than that, and this won't work properly. Okay, so it's got to be Ventura or iOS 16 and above. Um, yeah, the other, the other thing with that, of course, is this undo send business will only work with iMessages. If you send a message as normal SMS to somebody else who doesn't have iMessage, that facility does not function. It only works with iMessage. Um, so it's using the Apple iMessage servers again to talk to both ends to make it work. OK, no SMS, just iMessage. Thanks, Mark. Mark. Uh, yeah. Mitch has a question. And uh, Mitch, I think you arrived after I, I made this comment, but you're very welcome at any point to just uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. We have very oh, relaxed that's great. questions, but uh, yeah, uh, please far away. You, yeah, I don't think you've gone over the uh, uh, change of message yet, but I did want to mention that um, on changing the message, that now works for anyone who has iOS 15 as well as 
the beta 16. Uh, pulling the message back only works on the 16, but uh, changing it, they've, they've opened that up to, yeah. to going yeah, back I was, to 15. I was just, just about to launch into that, but yes, yeah, it does. Okay, good. I was ahead of you, I'm sorry. I stepped away okay. for a second. That's all right. <clears throat> Yeah, well, what Mitch was saying, um, not another thing in the message is, is if you send, an, send a message to somebody, you can edit the message and they will see the edited version of the message. So, very original, as you can see. And again, double tap on it. Oops, double tap on it. Come on, edit. And then hit enter to send it again. And this is something I noticed yesterday. If I, my phone's running iOS 15. If I go into that, that's the right part and look into the messages. Go into my own. And what it actually says on here, it, it's not reflecting directly in the one I'm working in. But on my iPhone, it, it says edited to, this is a message added to this. So it does actually tell you the message has been, at, has been edited. Um, I suspect nobody can see that, but we'll try anyway. Is that in the least bit visible? I doubt it. But, uh, yeah. So it, it does work. Um, I was hoping when I tried this earlier that if I edited it in here, you'd see the result come across, but you don't. You just, but I do see it on the iPhone. So I do know it works. Um, yes, and as, as Mitch says, you only need iOS 15 for that. You don't need iOS 16, unlike the other features. Okay, going to dive briefly into maps there's some nice improvements in there particularly if you're like me and you've got apple carplay running um it's going to be a great to me a great addition so we go into maps one of the things in maps now that i rather like is the ability to plan a route with multiple stops and not just going from a to b but we can go from a to b to c to d to back to A again or wherever you want. So if we do something like, uh, CB. Okay, CB10. And then we do create route. If you can, so you pick your initial place to go to. And we're going from, we're going to do IP 14XA. We'll go from there and do a plan. And then I should be able to add, here we go. We can add a stop. So I can actually go. Come on. It's definitely one of those nights. We'll do that. So we've got two endpoints and we can add a stop. And I did have one planned before and I've completely forgotten where it was. So we'll just, oh, let's go to Loughborough. Here we go. So it's now planning different routes and adding extra bits in. And you can keep adding bits in like that to your heart's content. Um, again, it, the other use thing I like about this, you can do the time you need to leave to get there, or you can do the time you want to arrive. And it will tell you when you need to leave. Do that for any of these. But uh, my main one is the car. There, there's, there's no buses around here. Uh, and it's quite a walk to get to the train station. So car it is. Even at the cost of today's fill. Yep. 
that was the biggest change in maps. I hope others will find useful as well. I most certainly will, because it's not unusual for me to do three or four different calls in a day, and it's nice to have the the route pre-planned instead of having to plan it from a place you've just stopped at. Right, there's uh, Safari. I'm not really going to go into that very much. It's got some extra group tabbings going on and more sharing possibilities. It's capable of live text. Um, has anybody come across the live text or not come across it? Or actually, it's an ability to read text inside a picture, which you can do, which is part of the system because Spotlight can do it. I did try it and I'm hoping I can see my notes as to what I need to look for so I don't look a total idiot for once. Uh, and I haven't written it down. Um, what I need to find is a picture with some writing in it and then I can show you. Spreadsheets, that's not what I want. And I stupidly tested this earlier and didn't write the particular document down that I'd gone into. It can be done on a website as well. If we can find a picture, if anybody's got a picture somewhere which has uh, got text on it, um, it will go look at it. I've messed up on that one. I've made the notes and haven't actually written down the bit I needed. Got the wrong notes. Mark? Yeah? Um, the live text is not actually new to um, Ventura. You can do that in. No, um, it was it was out there before. It's it's just it's it's improved in Ventura yeah, rather than completely new. Yeah, I was going to say they've improved it, but it's not yeah. new. Yeah. Okay, let's pop into. Yeah, one of the things I would like to have shown but can't because it's not there yet is the pass keys, the removal of passwords um, from Apple. And until I've actually had a chance to have a play around with it and test it out, I'm not going to go into it. But it is going to be something that is going to happen not just at Apple. Google are in on this, Microsoft are as well. And I would like to think that most of the major companies will do this so that we can actually dump the passwords. Um, it's looks like it's going to be a very secure system, um, but it will still be recoverable. It's still going to be possible to recover things if you forget everything. But you will have to jump through hoops with companies like Apple to recover that system. Did somebody squeak? Uh, me, sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. OK, let's just pop briefly into photos because I think there's something in there. Lots of people would be, yeah, excuse the dog. There's another, there's a new item in there. It says duplicates. Previously, if you wanted to find duplicates in things like photos and iPhotos, you had to either get a plug in or export them somewhere else. Now I can click on that and it comes up with a whole list of duplicates, which I have to be honest, I had absolutely no idea were there. We can go all the way through. So I've got my youngest, who is now unfortunately somewhat taller than I am, as he likes to point out most of the time. And you can merge the duplicates. And it moves one of them into the recently deleted. Okay, so you don't, by merging them, you don't 
lose both of them. It, it basically merges them together. If you've got the same picture in different albums, it will you will still see that same picture in the different albums. It's just merging the master picture in, in effect. So it will pop one of them into recently deleted and leave the other one in the main library. The other thing they've done in here into recent, when you look at recently deleted is you can't just go in and select and delete. You actually have to pop your Mac password in to get to the recently deleted photos. Um, it's kind of useful if you've left your, mach your machine, particularly if you're in an environment with, with, with a lot of other people, it's very useful to know that if you've got photos up like this, some bright spark doesn't come along and go, oh, oh empty, deleted, gone. They've got to know your local login first. So it's, it's just a bit of uh, belt and braces for you. And relock it. Now I've got to go back in to delete them properly. Um, I have been told also that photos that there's some um, you can disable the memories now and featured photos as well. I haven't bothered to do it. I'm quite happy with what comes up, but I know that some I have heard some people complain that they don't want to see the memories every X few days or few weeks. Uh, now you can actually turn it off. Mark, can I ask you a question about removing duplicates? Yeah, <clears throat> might be too early to be able to answer this, but um, you probably know, but I've got a lot of books. Uh, yes. I have a lot of books that I add images to on a regular basis. And through history, I have a large number of, I know I have a large number of duplicate images, but I've no idea which of those images are referred to by the, um, in the books by the placeholders in the books yeah so would i be correct in thinking do you know if one went through this process and chucked out all of the dupes that apple will have had the fabulous sense to maintain those links i don't know but from what they've described that's what should be happening mm. um, that that's what they should do J removing a duplicate should not compromise anything that's already there the, the links if you've got a link from a photo to uh, a book or anything else that should remain so if there are two if there are two identical images and there are two books but each book references a different version of you know either one of them yeah, yeah i know what um, you mean they'll both actually end up referencing the same image they, they should both end up referencing the same one. The only way we're ever going to find out is to yes, try test, it. Test it, yeah. So the first, thing, the first thing to do is to make sure your backup is up to date. Test it. If it works on one, it's going to work on the rest. Yeah, yeah. At least if, it, if you've got the backup and you test it and it doesn't work, you just bring it back from the backup. Yes, thank um, you. Needless to say, same goes for actually installing Ventura. Um, if anybody's thinking of installing it if you haven't already done so and if you have already done so I would like to think that you backed your machine up first which is what I've done with this anyway um, I'm in a fortunate position I've got enough Macs here to try different things with and I'm not completely dead in the water if one of them do, does go pear-shaped but if particularly if you've got one Mac back it up first if you're using it for business critical Despite the stability that you can see from this, and this has been remarkably stable, I still recommend people not to upgrade if you've got a business critical machine going, because it is it is just asking for trouble. Um, I've been fortunate enough that the uh, tablet, the Wacom tablet, still works. Um, I haven't had to update drivers or do anything funny with it. It just works, which I was very pleasantly surprised at. I thought I was going to have trouble with that, and I didn't. Same with the printers. They're all just working. Um, there will be some that don't. There are some older printers out there which will not function because the drivers will not work in Ventura. That's what we always go through all of the time. We always come across that sort of thing. And again, if in doubt, 
research it first and then upgrade don't just upgrade and then go oh dear that doesn't work anymore that was all i got planned to cover tonight i am sorry it's a little bit shorter than it ought to have been but as, as i said to mike last night i should have refused to do the july one i had forgotten why i don't do, do july and it's because i have a lot of schools to go into so i've been running around like a headless chicken um what with that and two emergency calls this afternoon it's been a bit tight and a bit fraught uh, so, if you'd like I've just I've just sent you a, a, an email with a, a photograph on, with text in it if you want to um, oh. just in case anybody hasn't met this yet and would find it useful. Let's have a look. There it is. So before you start playing with it, yeah, uh, just 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 to share this with everybody. Oh, I, I this, know what this is. <laughs> yes. So this this is Amazon at their absolute perfect best so they deliver an incredibly expensive keyboard to my house uh in a cardboard box mm. um i'm out because it's not scheduled to be delivered until the next day we have a carport with a massive great cover on it we have a shed with an open door and instead of using either of those the idiot just left it the other side of the gate in absolutely torrential rain thank you um, I, I, I just tried it and um, it, it will even lift text off this um, delivery note, which isn't which isn't even sort of square to camera. There it is. You know, it's Mitch uh, talking about lifting text. I, I don't know if it's the case in photos on uh on the mac but i know on the on the ipad on the beta um you can now go in and search for text that might appear in any photo um, yeah that, so I, like I, I went in i went in the other day and i put in ski and and 50 photos came up and they just and some of them didn't have anything to do with skiing but they had the word ski somewhere on a sign and it actually and if it was a small sign they actually had a dot that showed exactly where it was i thought that was pretty neat hmm. yeah yeah it is um right yeah you've got so we've got the image here and you've got a little tiny little box down there with some lines in it if you tap on that you can see it's highlighting all of the text I take that and bring up pages. Ah, come on. Oh, it's given an Amazon link with this. Yeah, no, that's not what we want. Can you not just click and drag across the image? Oh, come on. Should have been able to. Hit before. Let's do that again. This is not my night. This <laughs> is really, really not my night. It does work. We have had it working. It's just not going to do it right now. No, it absolutely does because I've, you know, I've used yeah. it. Yeah. I've I've used it quite a lot, even in Monterey. Um yeah. I even I took a photograph of a, like a 20-year-old table um that I'd recovered from a, an old doc, uh, file I found buried in my shed yeah and um, I used the you know the live text feature to copy it all into uh, I remember where I put it now but it doesn't matter I pasted it into something and it, it came out 
obviously is a long string instead of a table. But then yeah. I, I created a table and just dragged the lines of text to recreate the table because it was um it wasn't a huge table and there were like four lines of it was like fifteen deep and four wide. Yeah. yeah. Drag, drag made a table and dragged the stuff in, but it was way quicker than retyping the whole damn table. So yeah, it, yeah it's, very, it it's very useful. Really yeah. is good. And it works in Safari and uh, Quick Look even actually, which um, yes, used to work years ago, and then they took it away, and now it's back again. So. Ah, well, what Apple gives, Apple takes. Yeah. Let's try again. There you go. There we go. I think that's pretty neat. It's pretty good. I know it was in Monterey. It's got better in in Ventura. It it they're out they're like all these things, they're improving all the time. But yeah, that does make life a lot easier. It's it's much easier to do that if you've got to refer back to something you want or you want to send a steaming note off to somebody if you need to edit it and do anything else with it. It's much easier like that than having to type it out from scratch or even sending the picture. Although in this instance, um, yes, I could imagine, Mike, you'd want to throttle the person that, uh, who obviously wasn't sorry he missed you. Yeah, not my favourite human being. <laughs> Uh, Mark, I yeah. don't know, uh, because I got here late, did you, did you, uh, talk about the stage manager or? Yeah, we started with stage manager. Okay, that's fine. And we, and we discovered a bug in it as well. Oh, that's not a surprise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's, eight it's or one, good, or I, eight, three, whatever. Yeah, I think some people are going to find it very useful and others are going to look at it and go, what's the point? I actually find it very useful, um, but it does have its limitations. Definitely has limitations at the moment. Um, what I found earlier, Simon, was with if, if I'd started an application from the dock, then I switched stage manager on afterwards, it got confused. Right. Whereas if you start the applications with stage manager switched on, it's it works absolutely seamlessly. It's great. It's still it's still early, isn't it? It's still early yeah. days. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. Um, the one thing I'd quite like, although I'm not running Ventura, but the one thing I'd quite like to see is at the minute the the stuff down the left hand side, your kind of groups of documents or spaces or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I, I'd like to see those like retract when you're not using them. That would be. They sure. I, I would like to see them in a pop out drawer rather than fixed yeah on the side especially on the ipad because you know they're taking up useful real estate but um... yeah not not such an issue when you're uh running a mac it's, well no. if you've well, got a decent size screen i was gonna say if you're like me and you've got a 13 inch uh macbook air and you know again it's not i don't think it's something i'll use because I, I don't work that way but that's by the by yeah so, like you say I think some people are going to find it absolutely brilliant and probably useful on the iPad. But for me, it's a bit like well, that you're just replacing the finder with a smaller version of the finder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that's horses for courses really, isn't it? It's, it's a personal thing. Um, nobody's right. Nobody's wrong to use it. If it works for you, it's right. If it doesn't, <laughs> It's a classic Apple six ways to do everything. Yeah. Take your pick. There's a bit of a conversation going on in comments about, um, in chat, sorry, about dark mode, which um, some of our members clearly love. <laughs> right. This isn't dark mode. This, this, normal run, this I've got set to it automatically comes on um, when it starts to get past a certain time. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah, I know. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, again, it's a personal preference. 
and I'll never tell anybody off for preferring to do something one way when they can do it another. Uh, it's Mitch. Incidentally, they did. They just dropped the uh, beta four, uh, the iOS sixteen beta four for for the uh, Ventura and for the iPad and the phone this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I decided that wasn't worth my while trying to install just before we did this. Yeah. No. I I didn't install it on my Mac. I just, I installed it on the phone and on the iPad there was no problem yeah I would like to have installed IR16 on the phone but as it's business critical um I decided I'd, I'd compromise and just run the Ventura um, can't risk doing everything at once it's, it's all right I've got so I've got as I said before I've got the Macs I can use unfortunately I don't have extra iPhones I can use are there any other questions about anything? <laughs> They've all gone quiet. I've always said this, you know, that this is extraordinary. This is this there's this, this, this huge cultural divide between us uh, and our fabulous friends in the USA. And when I attend Naples meetings and they very occasionally uh, this happens and they 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 finish early, there's this great wave of people waiting to ask questions um, and over here in, in in the UK we're terribly quiet <laughs> <laughs> we're all too well, we just like to, Sorry, just like to gab that. over here oh yeah of course <laughs> thanks Mitch <laughs> Uh, come on, Mitch, you're letting the side down here. <laughs> questions, questions. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, I've been on, I've been on the Ventura since, since the first beta. And, and I'm really, I, I, I'm not a Mac person because I, uh, uh, even though I have it on there, I do 95% of my work on an iPad and, and an iPhone. Uh, but I have it on and it, it works well. And I'm one of these since since I'm a iPhone, iPad type guy, I was just delighted that they changed the uh, control center uh, uh, settings to more of the format of uh, what's in iOS. And they, there's definitely yeah. they're bringing those two operating systems together more and more each year. Yeah. It certainly looks more contemporary, doesn't it? Yes. All right, yes. uh, this colonist has a question. <laughs> it's the other American <laughs> in the room. <laughs> I, have to say, I have to say I was a little surprised and maybe even a little offended that the uh, Ventura upgrade would only go back as far as 2017. Uh, it seems like the iOS upgrades usually go back farther. Uh, so I'm wondering, does it have something to do with the new uh, uh, M chips that uh, Apple is uh, creating? No. no, no, it doesn't. Um, if, if it did have something to do with the M series of chips, then none of the Intel-based machines would work at the moment. Oh, okay. And they, they do. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what chip you've got at the moment. It's it's the age of the machine. So it's it's got something to do with the particular hardware something is required mm -hmm. in in the hardware and it's got to be that year of mac or newer to have that um yeah ch chip oh. doesn't matter at the moment okay at some point it will apple are going to sooner or later going to do what they did um when they jumped from power pc to in intel as they have mm -hmm. stated at some point they will drop the intel completely and we will only have m series chips or Apple Apple Silicon. Okay, thanks, Mark. That's okay. Billy McKee, would you like to unmute and just ask that question that I don't understand? <laughs> Billy? Yeah. Um, Mark, the, the, some of the developers that I, there's one of the pieces of software that I got called Photo Statistica, which actually gives you a sense of what the EXIF um, data inside um, photos looks like, which is really interesting. Um, but he he had said that there were some interface tools that were available 
in the more modern versions of um, of the iOS, and this was specifically uh, twelve um, that that would wouldn't allow backward compatibility. I mean, this is really deep stuff for developers. Have you any interest or any thoughts on that? That in fact there are new tools that are becoming available to developers that may well help to produce better software but actually won't go back beyond you know uh, iOS 12 well you know Mac OS 12 or is this just too far fetched it's with, without looking into it without actually going into it and having a look myself i can't answer that question um i do do some app development but i don't come across these things you, you are always going to find there'll be a, a point at which a tool X will no longer work for something going back to Y or Y to X even. It's You're always going to get that. Um, <coughs> so quite which bits they're talking about, which what there are, I don't know, without knowing specifics and having <laughs> looked into it, I can't tell you. But, the but reason I, I'm not surprised. No, the reason I'm asking this is that the answer to everything at the minute, or at least the, the sales pitch to everything at the minute, is AI um, enabled. <coughs> Excuse me. And if everything is AI enabled, that probably requires that the OS uh, needs to be beyond a certain point. And is there something that with all these AI enabled tools, that in fact we're going to have a, um, a point at which they'll work? And before that, they definitely won't work because the tools are now part of the OS um, generally. You know, in terms of photographic stuff, particularly, or is that just too the, the AI? Open? The AI side of things isn't just the software anymore, um, especially when you're looking at the M1 chip. Some of that AI technology is in the hardware as well. Mm -hmm. um, so one needs the other. So if you're producing something that needs yeah, needs the AI and it. You're going to need the hardware and the software to make it work. Well, I just wondered because neural neural chips and uh, neural AI seems to be, you know, a sales pitch at the minute. And I just wondered, <coughs> is it going to create backward compatibility problems fairly quickly? That's all. But you know, we don't know. We don't know. We're just going to have to wait. Um, unless you're doing the app yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that. Okay. Yes. Um, Chris Frank says, is Spaces still on Ventura? I think it is. Pretty certain it's still on. I'm not aware of them pulling it. Oh, if I can find it. Yes. Yeah, this, this is a good one where... If anybody sees it, shout. Mark, use the search. Oh, it's too easy. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, Chris, the answer is yes. It's still on. I've always used Mission Control to add or delete spaces. Is still there, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, look, there you go. Mission Control automatically rearranged spaces based on most recent use. So, yes, it is still there. That was good. Turn that setting off. It would cause chaos. <laughs> Doesn't cause me chaos. <laughs> Right, um, it's all gone quiet, so um, it's a quarter to nine. Uh, I think that unless anybody else has any questions, um, allow me to thank Mark for a fascinating hour and a bit. Uh, really useful, actually, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to using stuff like Stage Manager because I think it'll be really useful for my particular needs. Um, so September release, do we think? Do Looks we expect? Like it. And unless there's a unless there's a bombshell, yes. Yeah, great, great. Okay, um, 
folks, if you'd like to um, just quickly unmute and just show your appreciation to Mark, that would be lovely. And thanks again, Mark. Uh, I, I know you're really stressed. I know you've had a hell of a month um, at work. So um, but it's really good of you to pull this together in a hurry. Thank you, Mark. It's great. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Good stuff now.